بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم so we will pick up from uh, where we have finished from the previous lecture so we have learned so far a lot of things about flutter a lot of things but still a lot of things are remaining uh, before we can build the useful apps and inshallah today we will start with a very useful concept which actually every application whether it is in flutter or it's in native uh, code we use them which is called how to save app state so that if you even if you restart the application it will remember even if you even if you uh, restart the application you close the application and restart again the app will remember the state some of the choice some of the selections made by the user will be saved uh, for the app so how can you do it you can do it in several ways uh, one of the one of the way is to have a database and save your users data users responses uh, in the database it is possible so we use database if the amount of data can be a lot if the amount of data is lot then we can use database but for small amount of data like uh, we will show the example of dark mode today shana so whether the user selected dark mode or the bright mode how uh, we can save these selections uh, other, not by not using database but using a system provided like store storing place which is called shared preference it's called shared preference in flutter okay so to show it how to use it we need to first activate for example dark mode so we want to what we want to do is we will add an option in the in the app so when the user will click it he will activate dark mode or disable it and the app will remember so even if you close it and rerun he will remember the choice so this is what we want to do this is what we want to do okay great So, if we go back to the main dot dart of our of our app, and if we look at the my app class that we created and the material app that we returned in the build function, if you remember that, we gave him a theme value. We gave him a theme value. So this theme is the actually the light theme, the lighter version of the theme, like the one you can see on the screen. Now, if you if you move your mouse over Material app, you can see there is theme. Also, there is dark theme. There is dark theme. And there are also more high contrast theme, high contrast dark theme, and there is theme mode. So we are more interested in theme, dark theme, and theme mode. So by default, theme mode is theme mode dot system. That means if you if you implement and generate the APK of this app 
and give it to the user and user installs it and he runs it then the sim will be based on what is in the system if he is if his mobile phone is set to a dark theme the app will start in dark theme if it is set in like light theme it will start in light theme so this is by default based on system mode but we can force or we can allow user to change theme inside the app to do that we need to give him give the app a dark theme and actually this is a big area of uh, understanding and studying there are something called theme extensions which which was introduced in Flutter 3 and it's a very useful thing and we have used in our Sura app to provide 10 themes uh, it was uh, like a lot of work to do so that needs some uh, like some kind of uh, a lot of coding actually to integrate it inside the app so we will just show you the starting of what we can do with them and you can study or learn more about theme extensions and how to use them so we will give as the theme data like like the previous theme data we give him a theme data but we give him the default dark mode you can define your own theme actually you can define your own theme like we here we actually defined our theme we gave a, a green color for our primary background color but for dark theme, we say, okay, let the system use the default dark theme. Now, how can we, how can you, how can you force, uh, for example, how can you force the system to use, for example, a dark theme? forcing to do that there is a parameter called theme mode and in theme mode you if you write theme mode dot dark and if you restart the program the program will start in dark mode you can see here program has started in dark mode if you if you say light mode it will go back to light mode so by controlling this parameter by controlling this parameter you can programmatically switch between dark mode and light mode now the question is, the question is, uh, we want to control it programmatically. So how can we do it? How can we do it? So we can, what we can do is we can give him, like just as, a, as, as an example, we can provide as a, an icon here and or the button here and the user clicks it the theme will be like toggle between light and dark so how can we provide provide an uh, like a button here we can so let's go to our build method of this ui so the build method is here so this was the our app bar and we got the title from the based on the selection we did it before and if you put your mouse or cursor over the app bar you can see there is a parameter called actions there is a parameter called actions Okay, 
action. So we can use this action. It takes a list. So let's say uh, action. Sorry, here. Action. And give him an icon button. And on pressed, it will do nothing for now. And we give him an icon. Icon. Icons dot mode or dot mode. Okay. So we got a button here. We got a button here. So we want to what we want to do is Uh, we what we want to do is if you click it it will toggle between it will toggle between dark mode and light mode so how can we do it how can we do it okay so to do that there are many ways actually some some of the ways are beautiful ways what we can say some ways are working ways but ugly ways so what uh, we will do to show you the concept is not very beautiful way but we want to show you the concept and for uh, showing the concept yeah that will that will work okay so so what we'll do is let's define let us delete this code okay let's keep it in. okay so let's make like this So let's uh, make a is dark. False. So we have a variable called uh, is dark. So we give him a false value at the beginning. Okay. And What we'll do here, when you click this button, this button, it will call this on pressed function, and we will we will toggle this is dark. We we'll toggle is dark. So the is dark will will contain the the value. That whether you have selected dark theme or not. So then let's change the icon. Change the icon. But the icon, if if you have selected is dark, is dark will be selected. The icon should be dark mode, but which is filled. Otherwise, we will select the outline one. Okay. So now, okay, and then you have to call a set state to show the changes. Okay, now it works. Now it works. So the icon is changed based on whether you have selected dark mode or not. But the mode is not changing, right? You are clicking and you are toggling between mode, but it's not affecting the it's not affecting the system. Why? Because you are changing the mode parameter in this class. 
in this class, but it should be changed here. Okay, it shouldn't be changed here. So how can we do it? That's a that's a sometimes a very common problem. Like you you are doing something in one class or in one UI, but you want to update from another class or another UI. How can we do? How can you do that? Like maybe we should update each class. Yes, but each how can, UI component. Yes, but how can you how can you do that? Okay. How can you do that? That's the question. Add the theme to each UI component or just yes. one for all? No, actually what we want to do is we want to go back and update this one based on our selection this selection so this selection is changed in one class but we have to update the parameter in a parent class do you get the point do you get the issue it's a tricky issue and it's very common in uh, mobile programming that this my app class was a parent class from that, you call the training page class, which is this UI. Inside the training page, you are changing the selection, but it should affect the parent. It will affect the parent. So how can we, how can we do that? How can we do that? That's the question. So, there are several solutions. There are several solutions that uh, we can use. Okay, so one of the solution is when we will when 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 we will create this class, we will send a function from this class that will allow me or allow this child class to call and refresh the parent does it make any sense so what we want to do is we want to make a class called uh, say refresh me with the uh, and it will call the set state the problem is the set state is not available here because this is a stateless widget okay stateless widget, so it's not there so what we will do is we will convert this stateless widget into a stateful widget first We'll convert it to a stateful widget. So our stateful widget is here. We saw the how to do it. So we can replace with a stateful widget, but it will ask for what the state class, right? So we will close the class and create another class. and give him the name state and implement the create state function in the stateless widget okay so and replace the names Did we miss anything? Okay. okay. 
out of the root. Okay. Now the class became the my app became a stateful widget. So if we restart it, so we restart the app. It looks similar, same, but the original my app class it was a stateless widget. But it became now a stateful widget. The performance or the behavior remains same. But by converting to stateful widget, we can create a function and give a name like refresh me and call from it a set state. That gives like a like an option. Now, what we will do is when we will create this training page class, which is which is a child, which is a child for this class. We were passing what? We were passing a title, right? We are passing a title, but now also we will pass him. Final function. Refresh, say refresh parent. And we will send him and we will ask the constructor to take this parameter, this dot refresh parent. And then we will send this refresh parent the refresh me function. Remove the constant because now it's a function. So do you understand what I am doing? In the first day or the first week, we said that we can pass functions as a parameter to classes. So this is an example. So we created a function. We created a function to refresh that class. This my app state. So it, it, it to refresh this class. But we are passing this class to its parent. So the so the parent can sorry to the child so child can call it so through the class constructor we pass this parameter to the child very good now go back to here so once you change the dark mode set state is not enough because you need to actually you need to actually call the function for set state inside the parent. So we will call refresh and refresh is in the in this class, not in the set sets uh, like uh, state class. So we need to we, we use the widget dot refresh parent and we will call that function. OK. So, so we we are calling the refresh parent. Now the thing is why it's not changing the mode because we did not yet we did not yet change this value where this one. So what we want to do is we want to catch the current <clears throat> we want to catch the current uh, selection but the selection is where in the pair in the child class the selection is in the child class so we will ask that let him let him pass the value of the selection so 
what we will do is we will pass the value of the selection. Okay. Value of the selection. So, to make sure that this function is really called, you can make a print and you say, I am in parent class. And try to see whether this is being called. See here, it's calling the parent, uh, the function, this function. So, we are here. This this function is called from where? From the child. It's been called from the child. Are you with me? Are you getting uh, getting the point? Yes, uh, I get the point, but not how it works. In the yeah, be because it's, it's confusing. A, yeah, it's a tricky thing. You need to be you need to understand this uh, concept. Because it's a very powerful concept in uh, programming. And there will be situations where you need to do that. So let's, let's complete the process. And then we will revise it again. Revise it again. Because it's a very powerful concept. And normally you don't use these concepts in Java or in C, C++. We don't have. Because in C, C++ or Java, as far as I know, uh, there is no way to send functions as parameters. So that's why the newer languages, they are actually customized for mobile programming or the new, the new platforms. They, are, they have those functions because people, when they developed, they saw, oh, I need this feature. So they developed it. Okay. Now, Whenever, whenever you click this button, this button on the right side of the home, you will come here. You will come here. So let us try to save this value. So let's give another bool called is dark and keep it false. And whenever Whenever you call, we save this into our into our parameter. Okay. Now, now we have saved the value is dark from the child. And now let's use it here. If is dark is true, we will use dark more. Theme data dot sorry theme mode dot dark else we will use the light mode and let's restart it now let's try okay now it works So you can control programmatically the mode of the app and you are controlling from a child and calling a refresh function of the parent. So where is the confusion? So let's, uh, let's uh, take from you the confusion confusing part and we, we, we can revise this because this concept you need to understand this is a this is a very powerful concept powerful concept and it can solve a lot of tricky issues for you but as i said this is not a very beautiful solution it's not a very beautiful solution it can like if you don't 
document your uh, code properly, uh, it will be confusing. You will not know that from where the call is going from where to where. Because you are passing a function to a child and child is calling the parent. So things, things are like sort of cyclic order. So if you don't document these uh, like root of calling, then you'll forget what the app is doing. So can you can you let me know where is the con if if there is any confusion where is the confusion so that I can uh, revise them? Could you revise the refreshing part? Refreshing part. Okay. What about others? Are you with me? Today we have uh, less attendance. I think uh, some of you have uh, some other things. With with you, Doctor Tanwir. Uh, oh, great, great. So uh, let us try to see or revise what we have done because this is a tricky thing that we have done, but it's a, as I said, it's a powerful thing. So what we are doing? Remember, let's see the classes we have. Okay. See the overall overall what we are we are doing. So when the app starts, it starts with the main, like C or Java. We have a main uh, function. So the execution starts from here, from the first line of main. So all the initialization of the app, loading the data, uh, like setting up the database or shared preferences, everything should go inside this function okay inside this function so then after that we call the function called run app this is a system function provided by flutter and it takes the parameter of a class which will return a material app so we call this class my app and it was before a stateless widget. But now, because we need to store some values and re refresh it, refresh the whole app. Like normally you don't need to refresh the whole app, the, the entire app, because, uh, because normally you refresh some part of the UI. But like when you are changing the theme, you need to change the entire app. So we need to update the my app. So for that purpose, it should be, it is better to have, have it as a stateful widget. So stateful widget, so every stateful widget should have a, have an associated class for his state. So this is how the Flutter is working. So what we do, we copy paste copy paste and rename the class names. So this is the state class for uh, my app. Okay. And this app returns the bill, that the, the bill function is there, which returns the material app. And in the material app, previously we saw the theme parameter. Today we saw that there is also a dark theme. So you give him the theme for the dark mode. Either you use theme data or dark, it will use the default dark theme of the system. Or you can create your own theme data by calling theme data and giving all the different colors. It has see if you if you bring your mouse over theme data, you can see all these colors, all these values. You can you can set them separately and create your own theme and give it as a dark theme or as a light theme. The theme is the light theme. Because at the at the beginning there was no dark theme in Flutter. Flutter didn't support dark theme. Then later on they introduced. So the parameter name was theme. And the dark theme is called dark theme. So if they had if they had designed from the beginning, they could have uh, written it as light theme and dark theme. But anyway, so theme means this is the light theme. Dark theme is the one which is used in dark mode. 
So we gave him the default one, theme data dot dark. This function will return that default dark theme. And the theme mode is the mode where you where you tell Flutter which mode to use. Either you use theme mode dot dark or theme mode dot light or theme mode dot system. There is also theme mode dot system. Then it will take the selection of the system. If the system is set to dark, you will take dark. If the system is set to light mode, it will take light mode. And we want to select this parameter based on whether users whether the user selected the dark mode or white mode. So we we keep a bool value, although I created it later, but now I am explaining it as a, like a another another flow. So we created a bool variable which contains the user selection which contains the user selection, whether dark mode is selected or not. Is, if is dark is true, that means it's a dark mode. So we call here that if it is true, this is a ternary operator. Uh, I think you, you are familiar uh, with this ternary operator from C, C++, Java, in every language we have this. So if this is, this is an if else, right? If you remember, if this variable is true, the value will be dark. Otherwise, the value will be light. Okay, very good, very clear. Now the question is, user will change this value, how? How he will change this value? He is changing the value by clicking this button, but this button is not part of, part of this, my app state class this button is not here we are not drawing here we are drawing or we are laying out this button where in the training page class the training page class okay so let's go to training page class the state uh, class and go to the build so in the build part of the app bar there is a parameter called action which takes a list, list of buttons. So we gave him an action uh, icon button of dark mode, dark mode. And by clicking this button, user toggles between dark mode or light mode, between dark mode and light mode. Okay. Now, so it's very simple to do. So I created another variable here in this class called is dark initially it's false and whenever user presses it this on pressed function will be called and the dark mode the value will be toggled so if it is true it will be false if it is false it will be true okay very clear and based on this value i update the icon either filled means it is dark like here if it is not filled that means it's not selected, it's a light mode. Excellent. Now, the problem is you have to understand that this button, by clicking this button, we come here and we say the user selection, whether user wants dark mode or light mode. But to change the mode, you cannot do it from this class. You have to do it from its parent class, from here. Do you understand the difference? The setting is in the parent, but the selection is in the child. So normally in natural programming, the information goes from top to down, from parent to child. But here we need to pass information the reverse way from parent to child we need to send this variable to this parent and save it and then refresh the app so how can we do it as i said there are several ways and the way i am doing is 
like uh, is a working working way but it's not a very beautiful way but it's a it's a tricky but it's it's a what we can say it's a like handy way like it will it will save you in many cases it will save you from many problems like in in some situation we will say that oh there is like a cyclic order this one depends on this one the other one depends on the previous one so how can you pass data so the only way is to create a callback so what we did is we create a function in the parent called refresh me which takes a parameter of bool and this parameter is saved in the is dark parameter and then it calls the set state and this callback is passed as one of the parameter of the child so when you create the child you send him this function as one of the parameters as one of the parameters so that's why we created a parameter here as a function and made it as a required value required you need to use the key uh, keyword called required this dot refresh parent so then you must give this parent uh, this uh, parameter from the parent so you can see here okay so when this class is created now we have a link a link to this function which function this function okay very good now when we are updating this user selection we are calling the function that was sent by the parent with the user selection and we we are using widget remember we said that without widget it will not find the uh, function see it says uh, it's unknown is not defined because this this parameter was in this class not in the state class so but flutter gave a shortcut to access variables or parameters inside this class by using the keyword called widget so if you do widget like here if you say widget dot then you can see you get the values inside the main class so we say refresh parent and we send him the selection so this on press is called from where called from or called by clicking this icon so we click this icon we come here we save the user selection and pass this user selection to the parent through a callback function so we come we come here we save the selection and we ask set state set state will refresh will ask the flutter to refresh the ui what does it mean by refresh it mean it means nothing he will recall he, he will recall the build method so when he recalls the build method it will come here and it will use the new value of is that remember the set state doesn't create the class again it, it may create the class again of the child but not of the of the current class okay so it will use the new value of is dark and changes to dark or light based on the selection so the result is if you click it it becomes dark and if you click it again it becomes light is it clear now? Uh, yes, clear. What, what yes. about Ahmed? Is a Khalid? Any question? Any question from here?
Okay. So, so we we are able to programmatically change the theme. But the question is, as I as I laid out the question at the beginning, this selection is not persistent. So, what we are saying is, this user selection is not persistent. Pers what does it mean? It means if you close the program and rerun it, it will go back to the original setting. So, if we try to stop it and rerun the program, in, in the real life, what you will do, you will just close it from your phone and just tap it again to run it. So let's see how it starts. Oh, it starts in light mode, as I said, because the default one was is dark is false so it doesn't remember that the user selected dark mode so the question is how can we do it how can we save this selection so that the user selection is saved across app close even if you close the app and restart it, we still remember that the user selected either dark mode or light mode. This is a very fundamental feature or fundamental question that you must answer. You must answer or know how to do it if you want to do mobile development. In fact, any software development, you need to know how to save it. OK. So as I said, there are several solutions. One of the solution is to save the user selection in a database, either online or the local. Another solution is if the amount of data that you are saving is not too much. If the amount of data you are saving is not too much. Then what you can do, you can use something called shared preferences. It, it's like, uh, like a cache, sort of cache, but the operating system will not remove the cache. It's like a, it's like a, like, like a shortcut of, or syst like you say, it's a shortcut to database. It's a kind of database, but it is saved as a key pair like a format like you have a key and that key has a value something like this so you can save an int a bool uh, a string against each value will have a like a id or key so that's called a shared preferences so how can we use shared preferences in flutter to do that there is a package so if we go to pub.dev and if you search in the pub.dev shared preferences so you will see there is a package and it's from the core flutter trim it's provided by the flutter team itself and it is flutter favorite because actually without it it's hard to de develop uh, applications 
and it is supported over almost all platform. We have Windows, Mac OS, Linux, iOS, Android. So it supports all the format, all the, all the platforms. So that's a plugin, which is a very fundamental plugin. Okay. And it has how it has like description, how to write, how to uh, like how to save it but we will we will show you how to do it okay so in the previous class we we tried to use one of the packages so how to do it so you need to copy the name of the package Okay, so we can uh, either you can copy from here. Okay, and go back to pubspec.yml and under under uh, dependencies and dependencies. Okay, you can uh, copy and paste and get the. get the package and then stop the application because we need to restart it after adding Now, how to use shared preferences? So let's uh, make a class. Let's go to our main. Let's make a class in the leaf folder. New dot file called shared preference. Save it. And let's make a class called shared preferences, or uh, let's give it a different name than uh, like service. Okay, it's a class. So it's saying what? Add a parameter. So let's uh, try to copy from our old shared preferences. So we will, you need to add this package. And also let's copy the material dot dirt to our shared preference. Okay, and give him a constructor. Okay. Okay, great. Where we are. Well, let's let's close this thing so we have less files. But why it's giving an error? Let's see. Oh, so I gave I gave a. Capital. Oh. Oh. So, <clears throat> so we have a class we have created for shared preferences. Let's uh, correct the spelling. 
Preferences. Preferences. Okay. Now, when you want to create a shared preferences, you need to get an instance of, of shared preference. You need to get an instance of shared preference. So we will have a parameter called shared preferences. Preferences. And we need to make it a late because uh, we will create this instance of shared preference later on after we create the class because it is created asynchronously now we get a new concept called asynchronous we'll we'll we will explain it inshallah and let's uh, write another function called uh, load service and this service is a, this function is an asynchronous function. We'll explain what is async. And here we will we will load the shared preference. So it's called the get instance method. So we will we'll say that our preference is a weight shared preferences dot get instance excellent so let me make it a little bigger so you can see it more clearly okay now go back to main in the main before we call the run app before we call the run app, suppose we have a global variable, or yeah, we can we can keep it here. Say import. We have a class called shared preferences. Shared preferences dot dot. So let's make a class. Shared preference service. And create a shared preference service. And then we call the preference service. dot load service and we need because we are using a weight we need to make it a thing so what we are doing is we are before we call the app my app we are creating a preference service and we are asking it to load the service okay load the service now, once you load the service, then you can start using preference service. But the problem is, this is a local variable. So, what we need to do is we need to pass it on to the uh, to the, the to the child. So, let us create. let us okay may, can we make it like a global okay we can make it a global but okay it's better to pass it as a parameter so we say final shared preference say shared preference service and we make it here this as a required this dot shared preference service so when you call it, you need to give him preference service. So you pass it to him. You need to remove the constant now because it's taking. And similarly, when you are uh, calling the training page, 
you need to pass it also the shared preference. So we'll take a break now. We'll pray and come back and complete the shared preference concept, which is a very, very fundamental concept in Flutter. <laughs> 